Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Ed Mabaya. I'm one of the core instructors for the course. I wasn't here last week, so I thought I'd just introduce myself and my new face to some of you. It's good to be here again in a new venue. Uh, we're going to uh, try and maintain uh, uh, this venue for the rest of the semester. It's good that we outgrew the, the previous room. Um, a few housekeeping announcements, just so let you know that we do post the, those that are taking this for credit, the PowerPoints are posted on the class blackboard, but we also have all these presentations recorded and they're available on YouTube. So if you want to share with your colleagues, uh, if you want to look at this afterwards, they're all available online for you to see. And these are usually posted a day or two after the presentation. So they're available. We also encourage you to invite other family, friends, and other people who you want to participate in, uh, you know, who you think might have an interest in these topics. So. Without further ado, it is my delight today to introduce our speaker, Jackie Oyuki, who is coming in from uh, Nairobi, Kenya. We get a mix of speakers here, mostly academic talks, people who have written books, but today we're getting some uh, a talk from somebody who has lived and worked at the frontiers of most of the topics that we talk about here. Jackie has lived and grown up and is currently working in uh, uh, Kibera, in uh, Kibera in uh, Nairobi, Kenya, one of the big slums. She's gonna be talking about her work there and she, it's a very unique perspective to hear from somebody who is doing front frontline work on issues that we all talk about in most of our classes, most of our seminars. Uh, and I don't want to preempt much of what she's gonna talk about, but I will just say, if you can give a big round of applause for Jackie. Uh, and if you can hold on for questions until the end, And with that, I want to welcome you, Jackie, to give a seminar. And if you can hold on to your questions until the end, and we'll have a hopefully a robust and rich discussion afterwards. Over to you, Jackie. You. Good afternoon, everyone in New York, Kenya in the evening, and everyone joining from all parts of the world via Zoom. Um, hello. Um, Jacqueline Oyugi has uh, been introduced, and uh, today's uh, topic is creating sustainable infrastructure for communities, uh, not just in Kenya, but all over the world. Okay. So I'm Jacqueline is a training manager at Humanist Project uh, for the past 10 years, but uh, um, I started from somewhere to be a training manager today, a single mother to a very wonderful daughter, eight years old. Um, um, part of uh, my life, as much as I'm a busy career woman, I'm also a fitness instructor who strives to make uh, women and um, Everyone in the world just uh, be flexible in the body, body they are in and uh, uh, love themselves. I'm a side hustler. I do businesses also just to um, make ends meet. Uh, why am I uh, here today? Why? What motivates you? In, what motivates me in life? And uh, my biggest motivator is uh, my daughter. Um, whom, when I look at her, I see myself when I was growing up to uh, in Kibera. This is my home, sweet home. I uh, imagine a young girl um, growing up in this uh, wonderful, we call it the chocolate city because of the uh, rusty uh, brown um, roofs that have endured a lot of sunlight, rain, dust, everything that uh, um, falls on the roof. These young girls, as they grow up, they always have a vision. A mission, I wanna be great, I wanna travel the world, I want to be independent, I want happiness. But when you look at this community, you might see sadness, uh, you might see there's no vision, how can you, from here, travel, you know. So what motivates me is creating an opportunity for everyone who is born and raised here to see the world as a 
like your dreams are valid to see the world as um, anything that you put your hands into, you dream it, wish it, wish it, then you do it. And uh, another motivator is that uh, from here, you can travel to whenever you want, you can do anything that you want. And this one, uh, that roof doesn't stop you um, going for your vision. I come from Kenya. Uh, Kenya is big, uh, with um, populated with a lot of people, but I come from this small community inside Nairobi. Nairobi is uh, our capital city. Inside the capital city, there is a slum, Kibera slums, which has um, informal settlements inside there. And uh, do you know that uh, just Kibera slum uh, to go into the the um, the town and um, earn a certain um, um, a living, you just have to pay thirty cents, you know, like thirty cents away, seven kilometers away, and uh, you're there working in a maybe a nice job. But we are in the same um, we are in the same lo locality. There is developed place in Nairobi Central, and then there is this undeveloped place called Kibera. Uh, when you look at this map, this is um, Nairobi. Inside Nairobi, that's Kibera. So big, with a population of about uh, 1.2 million. Living there, I, I see that it's 1.2 million, but uh, from the census population and all that, um, they say it's approximately 250,000 people. And I believe it's a lot of people living in that small area and striving um, to make an end out of their living. This is in the middle of the, of where I'm born and raised, um, the drainage system so different from even New York here. That is uh, our wall made of mud and uh, when it rains, if this river is flooded, the water goes into the mud and uh, that is when uh, the water gets into the house and it, um, you can get any kind of diseases. And I remember when I was, uh, growing up, whenever it rains and I'm in school, I'm like, oh, did I leave my mattress on the floor? Did I leave my books on the floor? And sometimes we'll ask for permission just to go home and save our things from uh, being uh, swept by rainwater. That's also still my neighborhood. Um, the poles that you're seeing here, that is an electrical connection, so illegal, but we need power. I want to read books. My daughter wants to read books. Um, I want to be able to walk in, to walk at night and feel secure. So I need electricity and this is the only way we know how to connect electricity, the cheapest way. At night, so many businesses, wonderful people trying to be, to do something for the economy. And you see some of them may be sad, happy doing business, but at the end of it all, we are in Kibera and we have to, to make it. Take a moment and picture yourself walking in Kibera. To me, it's safe. I don't know about you. It is safe. This is our water. But we'll talk more about what my our company does, Human Needs Project. Um, the water that we drink from the source, it was clean from Nairobi water. But when it gets into these pipes that are on top on top of the road. If a car passes here or somebody eats it with a stone or anything hard, the pipe gets uh, damaged, gets contaminated, 
And I'm not even sure about this water when it reaches home. That is when uh, you get uh, waterborne diseases. So that's the picture. Smiles also in Kibera as much as we have so many challenges, we manage to smile. So much smiles. Um, so this place that you see here is in the middle of the building that I'm going to show you. Is in the front part of the building. We are solving this community there. Then in front here, we build a very nice building. I walk through here every day to go to work. And sometimes I have to like, when the train is coming by, I have to uh, squeeze myself in those corridors in order for, for me not to, to be run on by the train. But the community here, they also, when they see even a kid playing and they are distracted, they will like shout, hey, train is coming. And uh, they could, the kid, so accidents are not so much. Our women here spending a lot of time doing laundry. Where are they getting their water to do the laundry and the clothes to be clean? That's the river that, there. So we have a 1.2 million people in Kibera with a square feet of 2.5 kilometers. And the normal earning per day is $1. When I was growing up, at $2, you'll get a meal for three people. Right now, the economy is bad. At, I think for a meal of five people, I'll have to use $5. Challenges that we face in Kibera is energy dilemma with the poor electrical connection and clean water. You're not sure about the water. From the source, it was clean. When it gets into your house, maybe your, your jerry can is clean, your cup is clean where you put the water. What about the channel that it used to reach your house, inadequate housing? It's overcrowded. It's a small area with a lot of people. It is surely overcrowded. Uh, poor non-existent sanitation. Um, you find that uh, the toilets, the showers um, are not so many. I would rather build a house for my kids to sleep than use that space to, to build a toilet. So what we do is uh, um, you use a plastic bag, do your thing, then at night, uh, throw it out in the garbage or even here on the railway line, there's grinding poverty and danger also where there's no electricity. When it is scattered and everyone and people are idle, obviously there is um, some danger. We are re resilient. In all this, we manage to smile, we manage to wake up early in the morning, go to work, skip through the dentures. Like you can see that person, like, I don't see it as a dirty place. I'll, it's normal. I'll skip, go to work, or if my shoe gets dirty, I will wipe it and reach at the workplace so clean. We are a community whereby I won't see your kid doing a bad thing and not be able to like to help. When there is fire in one house, the moment I don't put out the fire because um, the moment I don't put out the fire, it will obviously burn 20 houses we are. We are connected. So we live in a very nice community and uh, we are proud of where we come from. Um, With this, I would love to tell about my story. I'm born and raised there, um, orphaned at the age of five years. My sisters um, who were left um, at a young age could not be able to take us to school. And uh, through the work of uh, well-wishers, donors, scholarship, I was able to go through primary and secondary school. But um, when you reach 18 years, they say, at least now you are an adult, you can be able to maneuver through life. And I started now working to help 
um, raise some money at home. And um, I really wanted to go to college. I wanted to go to the university, learn, graduate, be like the rest of the world, dress up nicely, you know, have that job. How could I do this when this is where I was born and I don't see maybe any graduate, I don't have a mentor. That is when um, I joined the Human Needs Project. Um, it's built like uh, 10 minutes away from where I live and I could see them building it. And um, they advertised that they wanted people who are born and raised in the community who are willing to, to see change in the community. And I applied, I didn't have any papers. I just wanted to work there in a big organization and be able to make a change. And that is when I joined the Human Needs Project. Um, this is the project back in um, 2010, but we opened our gates in 2014. Um, when the Human Needs Project was being opened, it was uh, that time we were solving water problem in the community. And after building the project, we were like, what alone? No, maybe what else can we do uh, to help this community more? And uh, we walked into the community and um, asked, what do, you guys, what do you guys want uh, to see in that center? And uh, first priority, obvious people said water. So we built a 300 meter well. Then after water, we created a one-stop shop whereby this mother in Kibera will be able to save time, energy, money, and be able to do a lot of things at the same time and be able to, um, I don't know, find time to rest. Yeah, they need to rest. So with this, we brainstorm on some uh, services that we can offer to the community in this such a small space, but uh, that will be bene beneficial to them. So that is when we created this uh, nice infrastructure. That is the building uh, when it started in um, 2010 from scratch, hired uh, community members to do the work because it is theirs. And from experience, if you bring maybe people from outside and do the job who don't believe in it, I don't know how it goes, but uh, these people were creating their own center. Community managers were hired down from the community, trained for two years on, um, uh, on how to manage the project in that if Jackie is not there today, Jackie is today in New York here presenting, who is doing Jackie's job back in Kenya? Somebody else. Yes, so we were all trained on how to um, be managers. We started with rotational um, shifts. And with that, everyone learned about everyone's projects. And um, it's easier to transition to do something else when you don't see your colleague as a, as a competitor or as a rival, but also someone who can take over when you have um, some other things to do. That is the center. So nice, a white building in front of Kibera. You remember that picture of Kibera? Then you see this. I walk in here every day and I forget that I'm from Kibera. It's so beautiful inside. Um, it's called a place of hope and opportunity for all. You walk in there with a lot of hope. Then when you come out, opportunities are presented in there and you come out with opportunities. So our mission is to empower people to break out of poverty by providing essential, sustainable infrastructure needed to succeed. If we are able to build town centers like this, all over the world replicate it, I think we will be able to solve a lot of problems. Uh, what we are solving is when there was no energy, Human Needs Project um, brought solar and um, PV and thermal, whereby our building is um, powered by solar. And also in the streets, we've installed 108, 108 uh, street lighting. 
and um, I am able to walk there at night feeling secure. Um, people are able to do their businesses. If they were closing work at around seven because it's dark and dangerous, now they're extending their time because there's more light. Um, where there were no skills, jacking growing up, no skills, no um, hope for going to the college, university. We started an adult learning project. This is where um, most of my work is in, whereby we develop programs that, um, so the programs are like um, basic computer skills. From some parts of the world, or um, computer skill is something that uh, people get it from a young age, but I, I went to learn computers after high school. I just wanted to use technology and you find that we have um, kids who are growing up, we have women who are in the community and don't even know how to use a smartphone. You know, all information is in the internet. So we started this project program whereby we are able to teach them on different skills. Um, that is basic computer, entrepreneurship, if you are a creative, photographer, videographer, that is the place for you. If you are an artist, we have a platform for an artist to perform, be able to be seen in the world, and um, just a platform to start. Um, we have, uh, there was no commerce, uh, the economy is low there, and uh, we developed a credit access um, um, department whereby uh, you're able to save with us at least $4, a month, then after three months of saving, you're able to get a loan to, to finance your business, if you wanna take your kid to school. Water situation, we solved it from the poor piping. Our water is well treated, um, goes through nanofiltration system. And then um, we dig our pipes, uh, inside the ground with a nice, um, uh, strong pipes that can endure any kind of uh, pressure put on them. So our water, we are sure about it from the source to your house. And uh, people get it through, um, they walk into the center with their jerry cans to buy the water. Uh, they can come in with the, those bulk tanks and we also pipe water to, people's houses. So our vision is to see our water in every tap of um, every house in Kiber. We have, there was no access to information. Information is power. And a community where there is no information, we take granted everything, like even during COVID, there were so many myths about the virus, about, um, the vaccine and all that. But when you walk into the com in, inside uh, the human needs project, we will sensitize the community about the virus, the dangers of the, of the virus, how to take care of yourself, how to, we will give free masks and advise them on um, different health information. So we have a Wi-Fi cafe and a computer lab whereby anybody can walk in and access information. And with that, if you don't know how to use a computer, Jackie is there to teach you how to use it. And you can be able to, yeah, to use it now at home. If you can't afford it, we give you a Wi-Fi password, you know, so good. Um, sanitation, we are able to solve the sanitation problem by building hot showers, imagine a hot shower and a dignified toilet, so clean. Um, and obvious, this is all this is not uh, for free. We chat the community, but our prices are very affordable to the target market. So it's a one-stop shop. You walk in, put your clothes in the in the laundry. This woman that was spending um, five hours at the river there, um, waiting for the water to calm down, take clean water um, to wash their clothes, and they hang it there. They can't leave the clothes there because someone might steal them. Um, because someone might steal them and they've already maybe used five hours of doing the job and they don't even just do um, one wash. They love to do like five customers wash in order to make a decent um, amount of money. 
at the town center, we have a laundry machine. Saves time. She brings the clothes, even five loads of laundry from different customers, put them in our machine. At the same time, she can walk into the Wi-Fi cafe, get some information, take a hot shower. We have a meeting room space whereby if she wants to interact with the community, share some thoughts, she can do it. Or now she has an option of going into my computer lab, learn something about uh, digital literacy. And after graduating, she's able to get work in an, in an office. So why is KTC unique? Why am I speaking at, about Kibera Town Center? with so much love because it is community driven. With that, I mean that everyone who works there is from the community. We went uh, to the community, asked them, what do you want to see in that center? And they said it and we brought it to them. So they use it every day. They feel that they, um, they own it. And actually, they own it because it is there. It is theirs. KTC unique because we have a flat structure model of working. I see my colleague as a friend. And uh, everyone working in different departments. If I'm on training, this other person is on water treatment. The other person is in the laundry. We are all managers. We are managing um, the center. That is why if... My friend is not at work today, he can go into the laundry and do the work and we all get the same salary. So it's not a competition at all. KTC unique because is unique because nothing is free. In a slum, when you build a nice building like this, people see it as a it's free service. You know, they expect that it, now that it is theirs, they gave you a contribution on um, what they want to see there. They helped build it. So everything should be for free. But uh, from experience, if you give someone a free thing, maybe they won't uh, value it so much, but the moment you put some money in it um, or some commitment in it, there is a way they value it and uh, I've seen it through even my classes. If you give a student a, a class for free, this person, if they do want to do computers or even photography, they might drop out anytime. But the moment uh, they pay something, even just a commitment fee of just register with $1, okay, this person will be there every day. Jackie, when is the class starting? When is the class starting? Because they paid something. So KTC is... Um, is unique. It's also unique because uh, we went through a four-year uh, needs assessment. We took time. We sat down in those board meetings, brainstorming, will this work? Are you sure? How can you do it? We bring uh, women in the room, sometimes old uh, meetings with the youth, just brainstorming if if what they said will work and how can we go about it? Because when we started, we had so many cartels that do water, so many cartels with electricity. We have other education programs, but uh, we wanted something that is sell, uh, that is sustainable. So the flat structure. Um, brings a shared ownership, people share responsibility. So my work is not my work alone and no burnout, just know that I got you. Then we were able to adapt to the work culture and embrace each other's effort. And with time, people became specialized in different departments that they, um, they manage. That is my friend Tyras, who is at the reception, smiling anytime we see a customer walks in because this person is walking in with hope and we want to give them an opportunity. So Tyras will be there to receive you and ask how can I be of assistance today? And this is how we, our customers walk out smiling because they met a motivated young man from the community who is ready to serve them.
This is our data um, since 2015 when we opened our doors. We've served uh, plus 10 million customer transactions. These are walk-ins, plus 1 million toilet and shower uses. The community is embracing it. They use our toilets and showers. Plus 30 million liters of water has been distributed around in and around Kibera, and our total revenue is uh, 450,000 uh, US dollars. Since uh, 2022, January this year, this is our data, the last uh, six months, 7.6 .6 million liters of clean water distributed to the community. 108 solar panels installed to date. So we are still, um, we are not just lighting up one part of the community. Our vision is to light up the whole of Kibera to make it safe, to bring more light and light is life. A thousand kilograms of vegetable have been harvested. I'll go through this. How does vegetables come in when we're just talking about water and education and all that? Uh, 55,000 uh, 55, total revenue sales. We have an employability skills training. This is what touches my heart the most. This is what I do on a daily life. I've trained more than 400, four, uh, 4,000 students since the beginning from basic information technology skills. You walk in without any skill on computer. I take you through a two months training. Then after this, a student will ask, Jackie, yeah, now I have the certificate. I want to get a job or I want to advance my skill now that I love IT. What else can I do? I'm like, maybe you can go into creative arts. So we partner with companies that do uh, photography and videography classes and the students are able to learn with us, get a certificate, connect them to internships. With the basic IT skills today, uh, a lot of work is online. People are doing a lot of freelance work. So we ventured into digital micro work um, skill training, whereby we train the students on artificial intelligence, transcription, data entry, image tagging, anything that you can do at the comfort of your phone or your computer and earn a living. For those who want to venture into financial literacy, uh, we have entrepreneurship classes whereby they can learn about business plan, how to calculate their profits and losses and know if the businesses is doing well. So that tags a long entrepreneurship class. With all this, we notice that Yes, I will give you the skills in computers, creative arts, and all that. But the moment you don't have work readiness skills, professional development skill, you don't know how to present yourself out there. How do you communicate to the to your colleagues at the work? How do you even start applying for a job? Because you'll see someone would be like, Jackie, apply for me this job, and I've gotten the interview. What do I say in that interview? So we integrated this kind of a skill, super important in every workplace, whereby when you walk out of the Kibera Town Center, you have um, work ethic skills. Uh, you are able to have some confidence. I was so shy growing up, very polite. And even my sisters nowadays don't believe that Jackie can be able to speak in a large audience or even become an instructor. So it took a lot of work uh, to just be able to speak uh, in front of people and my students motivate me. I'm like, I can't be shy and I'm, and I'm teaching you how, you know. So I learned a lot and uh, with this, I try to pass it to the students to have that confidence and speak up. No one will eat you like no one is, will eat me here. Yeah. <laughs> so the impact numbers are really great first, uh, the computer skills, and then uh, most of them go into the artificial intelligence um, training because of the jobs. Then 70% um, of our students have been absorbed in uh, business process outsourcing companies where they help the companies in doing um, um, 
data entry jobs, uh, image tagging, machine learning, and all that. Um, a small percentage goes into entrepreneurship as a side hustle also. Kibera um, Town Center is always growing, and we try to venture into new ideas every time we get an opportunity. And uh, last year, we started a food and nutrition program whereby we are using the hydroponic system uh, to grow our food in an urban setting. Imagine the way Kibera is congested. How will I be able to eat from my own garden? How will I be able to grow my food? So this kind of a system uses high yield uh, nutrients. Um, then uh, it doesn't require a lot of water to uh, for growing your food. And you are able to uh, grow your food in anything. Like um, from that picture, you can see we have used pipes. And then we've put, um, we have recycled um, yogurt, um, yogurt containers. And with that, uh, you're able to get a good number of uh, spinach and uh, skumawiki scales for a nice meal um, at night. You are able to grow cilantro. And uh, so it has so many designs of uh, growing it. It can either be like this, um, horizontal, or you can do it vertical on your wall at home. The organization is, um, I've talked about so many good things that we are doing. As much as with that, we, we are facing a lot of uh, challenges. Challenges are good, make you grow. Um, sustainability, we are yet to reach uh, sustainability uh, because when you compare our revenue and income, um, we spend a lot in maintaining the building and also the income that comes in uh, because of the community we serve, it's only a little. So most of the time we are dependent on um, donors, fundraising to raise even um, a staff salary. The management structure also, um, sometimes you find that as much as it is a flat structure and we are all doing different things and we find that sometimes I need to report to someone just to check on what I'm doing. The community mindset uh, change. Um, we believe that not everything is about one uh, handout that you can actually pay and get a good service. The white ship, you saw the center, how it's nice and white. Some people see it as a, as a white ship, like maybe I have to dress up well to go into that center. Maybe I need to have a lot of money so that I can afford the services. But uh, we didn't build it um, that way to intimidate someone. Uh, we are actually, it's a center for everyone. It's just it looks so nice and we want the community to like to trust it. Um, and the development of Kibera is slow. So this is, these are the challenges that we are working on in order to, um, to make it rise. Um, all this, we have success stories. This is my friend, Carol, who came into the center, learned about entrepreneurship and started a daycare service to take care of our kids when women go back to work or want to advance the education. We have Marion, who started as a, intern at KTC, so the opportunities that we have there and we actually encourage our staffs to learn. And now she's working at a, at a business process outsourcing company as a data, as an agent. Bernard is a good photographer in Kiberam. He started, he took our photography classes and now he owns Bench of Sports, uh, whereby he takes photos of uh, any sporting program in Kibera and makes a living out of it. Kibera to the world means it's a, it's a beautiful place. And uh, I am one of the success stories and a lot of other uh, success stories have you seen my friends there, my, my students. And um, if we are able to, uh, to replicate this building to the all, to the world, 
where the services are needed, I think we can be able to create sustainable infrastructure in any community. Asante Nisana, thank you so much. It was my pleasure. Uh, thank you so much, Jackie, for so much. excellent presentation, but also for the beautiful work that you're doing. We have uh, maybe five to ten minutes for some questions, and I also have, by the way, slot maybe for five students to have lunch with Jackie after the, the talk. So, uh, questions? Let's start right there. Can they make a shot? Oh, my phone is in the room. I got really emotional because it reminds me so much of home. I haven't seen any presentation that's so similar to what I see every day in the ADM. And your project has been so impactful. And I really see like the difference that it can make. Although like to, from the outside, it could seem small that it's one, one community center, but it makes such a difference. It really touches me to see how, how you've made this happen and how you've like grown from where you come from. You're like who I aspire to be. Um, but my question, like, I'm sorry. <laughs> My question has to do with difference, um, sort of, because for me, instead of being like a resident of, of the community, like you showed, I was somebody who was living in a, a wealthy neighborhood and I would drive and see that every day. And I always like saw that and wanted to make a change and, and contribute in some way. Um, and I see how your program is fully operated by those community members who are part of like live and were grown up in that community. And my question is, how can someone like me who sees this this um, life, this this the way that people live, but is not part of that inside community contribute and make this same type of difference? Thank you so much. Um, actually, our center uh, takes in anyone who wants to do internship, volunteer. If you have an amazing idea of how we can work together, you're welcome to, to join me in the work that we are doing in Kibera. Yes, and those are our contact information. Reach us out. Come to Kenya. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And uh, I should say that actually we are coordinating with uh, our engaged learning coordinator here. Uh, if there might be opportunity for students to participate in this project in the future. Uh, yes. <laughs> okay. okay. Thank you, Jackie, for sharing your journey. Uh, it was very, uh, I could connect at so many levels. Uh, how do you, now, what is the future for KTC? How do you imagine it scaling up? Because I'm, I'm sure this is one, one small project. But it's it's a it's an impactful initiative, but there there is a need for more. And how do you? And for this to scale, there's always need for the government to be involved. Do you see uh, the recognition from the government for such initiatives? And how how do you want to take it forward? Um. How I see KTC um, growing is that uh, our mission is to, um, the revenue that we get 50%, uh, we take it to another area and build another community center so that we are not just serving the people of Kibera, but also we can uh, go into Brazil, Haiti, and build another center and serve also people. Uh, the government is also, we are working with the government uh, because just even setting up this building, we needed a government to give us the permit, um, the water that we um that we purified there, we had to work with the government to also um, get uh, the permit to recycle even um, even the water and to pipe water through um, the railway line and reach the community. So we are really um, working with the government um, to to sustain the building. If yeah, yeah. 
Thank you. My name is Kalista. Uh, regarding the chart showing the participating or the implementation of the different program, uh, I realized that there is a few young people who is interested to entrepreneurship. What can be the obstacles that prevents uh, the young people to go to entrepreneurship? Since we know that uh, one of the solutions to unemployment uh, is entrepreneurship. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so the solution to entrepreneurship, how we are doing it is that uh, we have a program whereby we teach them about uh, financial literacy. We've uh, partnered with organizations that are specialized in that. And uh, they access, they also, um, the youth are able to save with us and they get three times their saving to even just start up a business. And um, the Kibera Town Center actually facilitates that. So... That is what we do in the financial department in the credit and saving uh, cooperative society. That is how the, the main reason even why we started the circle. Because you find someone has this great idea, but they don't have the money to start that business. And um, they have to put in some money and get a loan. And um, through um, the manager who is there, he visits the job, he visits... Um, the work that this person does and uh, sees the progress and is able to give financial advice. Thank you. Hello. Um, it was an honor to get to hear you speak. Thank you so much. I wish I didn't have class after this and could have lunch with you. But anyway, um, my question, and I apologize if you sort of touched on this, how did it actually get, like, was it an outside person coming in or was it someone on the inside or maybe both like how did it actually launch and they reached out to you and hired you thank you how it all started design 2010 our founder is called connie nelson uh she's an Hollywood actress and uh, she came to shoot a movie called lost in africa then uh she saw the hospitality of the people in kibera like Someone will think that if you offer a different color when you walk in there, it's dangerous for you. But she saw that everyone was like, hi, so hi, Mzungu, how are you? You know, people were so friendly and she was like, what can I do for these people in return because of the hospitality that I've received here? And that is how the conversation started. And she met two gentlemen who were like... You can actually help us if you drill a borehole for us, bowl for us, and uh, bring water. And through water, then we started hmm, water alone. Let's go into the education way. Let's uh, create a laundry here. And with laundry, we were like, how can someone start up a business? Let's do a, a savings um, society. Let's create a meeting space. Let's create a cafeteria where somebody can walk in, have a decent meal, have a safe space to to just talk and um, access information. So that is how it all started from a 300 meter borehole to now a one solution center. And uh, being a woman, she saw how the women strive to make a living and just spend a lot of hours doing a lot of hard labor job. So we wanted to make, to bring a solution. In one hour, you're able to do a lot of things and with a little amount of money. Thank you, thank you. Uh, any any other way room for one more question? <laughs> oh, okay, we we'll make go ahead. You can make it very brief. Okay, thank you. Uh, I just want to know how do you think that we could contribute to communities that don't need this kind kind of interventions? Because this is a solution came from the community, but this is the uh, responsibility of the government. So, how do you think that we could do? or don't need this kind of uh, interventions and create opportunities like in a bigger scale. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, what we noticed is sometimes when we, went for the, we wait for the government to do some things, they might take a long time to do it. So it actually starts from us. And um, the only way to create a solution is see the challenges that that community is facing then um, come up with a team that uh, can brainstorm on the solution. And um, from the challenge, you create a solution and you start it alone, the government will join later on, or even if they don't join, you find like-minded people who believe in the vision and 
that is actually how it happens. Like when we build that, um, the toilets and showers um, back in um, in 2010 and opened our doors in 2015, the government came up with a project in 2018 for building toilets and showers in the community, but we couldn't wait. So we started, then the government joined in later on. Yeah, so you start immediately. <laughs> Thank you. All right. I really wish we had more time for this conversation. But like I said, those that wish to speak to the uh, to her after this, we have maybe about uh, six, seven spaces for people to have lunch with her. But before we close off, I want to say for those who are joining online, especially those in Kenya and Kibera, want them to know that she represented you very well. And let's give her another big 